Now, Father, we ask that you reach deep inside of our on these vessels. Pull out the healing, pull out the change. We know you know our hearts. We know you know our thoughts. Father, today we just ask that you find something in us that's usable. Encourage us. Give us the energy and the strength to simply do your will. And today we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And let all of God's children say amen. 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 If you all stand with me, please. Stand with me, please, and turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 13. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 13. And when you have to say, man, you need some time, say, hold on. Hold on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah 29. 10 through 13. 10 through 13. Amen. Jeremiah 29. 10 through 13. Amen. And it reads as such. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then... You will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. You may have your seats in the Amen. presence Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Allow me to preach a message to you today titled What he thinks about me. What he thinks about me. If I could subtitle it, I would subtitle it. He knows your heart. Amen. Amen. He knows your heart. The earth, this thing that we live on that spins and got continents. We would like to think it's the only one in the universe. I'm sure it's not. But this earth has, as of 2021, upwards of 7.8 billion people on it. 7.8 billion. The question that, and, and, I, and I read that, I don't, I don't know what I was doing, I read a lot during the week, but I don't know what I was doing where I saw that, that stat, that census. And I wonder, do I really matter? Does little old me really matter in the whole scheme of all of us? That can be that can be a really debilitating question. When things may not be going right for you. When you're constantly being overlooked. When things don't go your way necessarily. When the people that are at the top of the mountain make the decisions for those of us that are not at the top of the mountain. But they don't make decisions that are favorable for us. Where is my win? Where's my peace? How can
can I say that I'm living my best life? When sometimes I don't even want to wake up and face the world every day. Now you may feel that amongst a number of this size of that 7.8 million, you are pretty insignificant. If I do this, nobody's going to see me. Nobody's paying attention to little old me. Nobody's bothered by what I do. You may feel that the Lord doesn't have time for somebody like you. The truth is, this verse teaches us that he does think about you. He does think about me. He thinks about all of us. Of course, this is a word which was spoken to the people of Israel concerning their time in Babylonian captivity and a promise of their safe return to their homeland. However, there is application here for the church. There is application here for every one of you. There is application here for me and you. This part from verse 11. And when God makes a statement in that verse that encourages or should be encouraging to each and every one of us. Amen. What does the Lord think of me? What does the Lord think of me? Even better question, does the Lord even think about me? Amen. You may not feel that God even knows your name. But I know he does. Amen. Let's look at the word of God and see exactly what it says about how he thinks of you. You have to understand that in order for him to think about you, he's got to know your heart. I can think about the person going up and down the road. I can think about Maybe blessing them without talking to them, but I can. There's this gentleman I used to live next door to when I was living in Georgia. This is hidden. And um, his son was a NBA basketball player. And this man lived in modest house. Modest, modest house. With a brand new Lincoln Navigator sitting in the yard. Beautiful truck, beautiful vehicle. Cost more than a house, probably. <laughs> and I was talking to him, and I said, I asked him, I said, that's a nice truck, because I'm a car guy, I love cars. He said, I like it too, but I wish you would have bought me a pickup truck. <laughs> Case in point, how can you bless somebody without knowing them intimately? You may think that Escalade or that, um, that Navigator was the best thing for that parent, but all they wanted and needed was a pickup truck. I'm so glad that my Lord and Savior knows me. He knows my heart. Amen. Amen. He knows what I need. He knows what I stand in the need of. So the first question I'll ask you today in, 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 in the whole context of this series that I'm doing, don't let the sunshine distract you from the sunshine. And here's what that simply means after three weeks of preaching it. Don't let the things of this life distract you from doing what God has brought you to do. Amen. Don't let the things of this world distract you, whatever What's going on in your world? Don't let the good times distract you. Don't let the bad times distract you. Understand this. Uh, the story of Job. The story of Job. We talked about it last week. Job had everything taken from him. But it didn't stop him from praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't let this thing that we're dealing with here distract you from what you've been called to do. Amen. 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 But the first thing I want to ask you is, how well does God really know you? How well does God really know you? God says, I know the thoughts 
that I think towards you. And of course, God was writing to the nation of Israel. They were in captivity in Babylon. And God is reminding them that in spite of their pain and suffering, in spite of what they're going through, they are still on his mind. He's working out his perfect will in their lives. When, and when he is finished, it's going to be better than when we than anything that we do when we are finished. Amen. 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 He will change them. And when Israel went into Babylonian as uh, Babylon as prisoners, the nation was guilty of idolatry. When they came out, they never resorted to that sin again. God used a time when they thought they were forgotten and forsaken to make them stronger and better for his glory. How many of you have ever gone into something in, in a dry season and, and you were beat up in that dry season? Amen. You were thirsty in that dry season. You were hungry in that dry season. You were looking for a way out of that dry season. But when you came out, you were stronger. Amen. 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 You left some of that negativity behind you. You said, I'm never going back there. This morning I shared with, with our, our Sunday school, uh, with our Sunday school class, strong men create good times. Amen. Amen. Good times create weak men. Weak men create bad times. It's a cycle. It's a circle. When we are left with nothing, we have nowhere to go but up. You know, it's funny how when you're down, when you're out, when you're broken, that's why I love that song. When you're broken, when you, when you have no more resources of your own, you get to pray. Yeah, you get to pray. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of prayer. There's nothing wrong with a lot of prayer. Mm. But we find ourselves in the midst of prayer when we are at our lowest, when we are in those valley of Baca moments, when, when there's nothing around us to, to give us nourishment. There's nothing around us for us to reach to but up. Then mm. we reach up and we find out where our blessings come from. We're given those things that we need, not necessarily the desires of our hearts, but the things that we need to make it through, to the other side of through, whatever through is. Broken relationships, the other side of that is a better relationship. Hunger and famine, on the other side of that through is, is eating in, in excess. <laughs> Homelessness, jobs, unemployment. There have been times when we have been in those places and we ask for a blessing. We ask, just, just give me a job. Just, just put a roof over my head. And God shows up and he shows out. He blesses you with a job you didn't qualify for. Yeah. He blesses you with, with, with something over your head. You may have had to put some work into it, but guess what? It may have been free or a whole lot cheaper than what you would have been paying for. Yeah. God knows how to bless you, when to bless you, and what to bless you with. Amen. 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 If we had it our own way, if we had a had a scripted that thing our own way, we would have probably messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> but when you pray, mm. Mm. you gotta stop crying. Because yeah. if you're gonna keep crying, you might as well stop praying. Yeah. Mm. Prayer works, amen. 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 But God has a knowledge of us individually. He knows us intimately and individually. Mm -hmm. There's a reminder that all of the people in this world, all of the people under the sound of my voice, God has his mind and his heart's on you. He sees you not as just another number. He sees you as an individual. He has specific thoughts about you. He cares about you individually. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what will get you over that hump. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But it's an intimate, it's an intimate relationship. And, and don't, don't get it twisted. I'm just saying intimately, he knows what makes you tick. As he spoke to Moses, he spoke to him mouth to mouth. Intimately. He hears you as well as you hear him. 
Now, in order for you to hear him, you've got to spend time with him. Amen? Amen. You've got to pray with him. You've got to give him his time because you, you, you can't cry about the outcome when you ain't putting in any work. Right. You, can't, you can't get mad at God for not doing for you when you ain't asking for it. When you don't pray, you get what you get. When you don't spend time with him, how can he talk to you? You've got to have a relationship. You've got to have, and relationships are two ways. Amen. Let me put it in your lap. If you're talking to him and he don't say anything to you, maybe he's telling, that's your answer. Maybe he's telling you just wait a little bit. Let me work some things out for you. Let me pave the way. Because what you want may not benefit you much, but what I have for you will benefit the masses. Amen. 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 We got to get to the place where patience and waiting is, is, is needed and necessary in his plan for our lives. Matthew 10, 29 through 31 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Even though I don't have any, that, that still counts. Fear ye not, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. If he will give that kind of thought and care to a bird, what do you think he'll do for his child? Amen. Amen. Even a little sparrow falls to the ground does not escape the attention of the Almighty. The reality for us is that the Father is so concerned about our lives that he knows the very number of hairs on our heads. And if he is concerned about something so insignificant, then we can rest assured that he will take care of those heavy issues of life. Amen. Amen. We know his, his wisdom. We know his knowledge of us. It's infinite. We know that his knowledge of us is instant. That is, the knowledge of the Lord regarding our lives is always before the Lord. Let me make it simple to you. Anything that we are dealing with, anything that we are going through, anything that we have on our hearts, God sees it. We can't hide it from him. Even if it's embarrassing, even if it's something that we don't want the world to know, God knows our hearts. Proverbs 21 and 2 says, every way of a man is right in his own eye. But, somebody say but. But, but the Lord ponders our hearts. If he knows when the sparrow falls to the ground, as it says in Matthew 10 and 29, then you can be sure he's aware of everything happening in your life on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. In other words, God's eye is constantly upon the affairs of his children. Amen. Amen. This is encouragement to me because I, I know nothing happens in my life that catches the Lord off guard. He knows what happens to me. He knows it's coming. He knows how to handle this thing. We just need to fall back and have peace of knowing that he's got this thing. Amen. Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things that are not done yet saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So in other words, the problem that you're dealing with today, he knew about it way back then. And he's got your back. Amen. Amen. Do you think that if he brought you to something, he's going to leave you there? Do you think that if the, the one who created it all is going to bring his child to something to watch him fall? Get in the boat. Amen. 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 Get in the boat. Amen. That'll take you to the other side. He's already worked it out. He's calmed the sea for you before you got to the sea. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He knows about your sins. God knew all about Israel's sins and nothing, nothing, nothing. There was nothing in their hearts or their lives that he didn't know about. People are kind of silly when it comes when it comes to their sins. 
They think that if nobody sees them, <laughs> that they've got away with it. Amen. Yeah. 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 They often act as if God cannot see or isn't aware of what they're doing. However, since the first sin was committed in the Garden of Eden, God has witnessed every single one. God is no less aware today than he was then. Yeah. Hebrews 4 and 13, for thou numberest my steps. Does thou not watch over my sin? Hmm. Psalms 98, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Understand, you're not going to get away with your sin. So how do you feel better about sin? Don't do it. Amen. Amen. Don't do it. So you don't have to hide, so you don't have to backtrack, so you don't have to cover up that thing. It always catches up with you, amen? Amen. amen. But God knows about our situations. Job 23 and 10. This verse tells us that the Lord knew everything that was happening in the life of his, of his servant Job. He knows that, that everything is happening to you as we speak. He allowed it to happen for his purposes and for your good. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. How many of you love the Lord today? Yeah. yeah. To those who are called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. Do you know what your purpose is? Do you know what God has called you to do? Hmm. He knows about all. He's in the midst of it all. He cares about what you are facing. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. You may feel like God doesn't care, but the truth is he cares far more than you could ever know. He has promised grace to bring us through. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient. It's sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Listen, when you are at your worst, when you are at the bottom of the barrel, when you are in that valley moment, God is at his best. Yeah. Come to me, all who are who labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes there are storms that darken the way. Sometimes there are burdens that are hard to carry out. Other times there are sorrows and troubles that seem to hide the face of the Lord from us. But I encourage you, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. God knows everything that you're going through. Mm -hmm. There were times in the Bible that, that it declares that the Lord was faithful on behalf of his people. Remember these. Remember when he parted the Red Sea? Yes. Yeah. Remember the three Hebrew boys that he protected from the fiery furnace. Remember how he protected Daniel in the, in the lion's den. How about when he fed the multitude? Not once, but twice. <laughs> when he came to the disciples in the midst of the storm in John 6, understand this, he sent them to begin with. Did he know about the storm? Of course he did. He ordered it. There are many passages that teach us the same truth. That teach us the same truth that he knows about you. But what is revealed by God's knowledge of you? What do we see? How does God react to the knowledge of you? What do we know? God reacted towards you in the past. He reacted towards you. God moved in Israel's past by choosing them 
over all of the other nations of earth. He moved by delivering them from Egyptian bondage. He moved by bringing them through the wilderness and into the promised land. Mm -hmm. He had plans for this nation. Yeah. Not all plans of evil, but plans of peace. How many of you yes. can use some peace? Mm -hmm. The plans were designed to bring them into an expected end. Mm -hmm. God moved like this in the lives of all of his children. God took steps in the past to meet our, 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 our deepest needs that we had. How many of you can stand here today and say, how did I get through that? How did I get through that? How did I get through the loss of a loved one? How did I get through that mental health breakdown? How did I get through losing everything? How did I get through losing that job? How did I get through? What you got? You said, what God? What God? So the question may arise at this time. Why doesn't God do something about this battle that I'm fighting? I prayed about it and I'm trusting in him, but nothing ever changes. The, the only response I have to say to this is God train does not always run on your track. <laughs> mm. Amen. It doesn't. It doesn't. He will move in his time. Not necessarily in your time. Because mm -hmm. if he gave you everything you wanted when you asked for it, you may not appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Down the line. That's called entitlement. You ever see a spoiled brat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They get to crying, they get to jumping around, they get to crying. Mm -hmm. And you know what every cry means. Mm -hmm. You do. You know what every cry means, and then you give it to them, and, and now all of a sudden, everything is good. Sometimes we got to cry. Sometimes we got to go through something to appreciate what we have. Sometimes you got to go through that heartache to appreciate somebody treating you well. Sometimes you got to go through that knucklehead on your job to understand what, what a good boss or a good work environment looks like. Sometimes you got to go through some heartache to get to get to God's blessings for you. In other words, we got to go through some things. We got to get taught some act right. Iron sharpens iron. Remember that? Yeah. Amen. There are times when we need to be sharpened. There are times when we need to be sharpened. Remember the words of that old suffering saint, Job. God knows the way that I take because God's plans, he, he, he plans the way that I take Everything God allows in your life and mine is an effort to mold us into his image. Ephesians 4, 13, and I'm done. Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son God unto a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We have to understand you got to go through some things to get to his promise. Amen. 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 And if he could go through what he went through on the cross for us, then we can definitely deal with some, some ignorant acting folks. Amen. 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 If he can go through what he went through on the cross, if he can go through being, being placed, uh, having the crown of thorns placed on his head, if he can yes. go through yes. having his hands pierced on, on each side, if he can go through being stabbed in the side, then we can go through some family issues. Amen. Amen, Amen somebody. Yes. If he can go through it for us, then we should be able to go through it for him. Amen. Amen. What does God think about you? I'll tell you. He loves you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. No matter where you are in the world today, no matter what you are facing, or what you're going through, there is help for you. There is help for you through Jesus Christ. No matter what you have gone through, no matter what you have done, there's this thing called forgiveness. God gives us grace every single day. And I said it this morning when we started. God gives us grace for each new day, new mercies, a new beginning. So we can simply do our best to get it right. But we got to have a relationship. 
Amen. Amen. Gotta have a good relationship. Amen. Amen. And if you have found yourself outside of that good relationship, that covenant relationship that we speak of, that intimate relationship, that back and forth where you speak to him and he speaks to you. He speaks blessings upon you. He speaks instructions to you to move left or right and you hear him and you listen. If you find yourself outside of that, today is your lucky day. Because we're going to pray for you. In a traditional church, we this is where I would say that the doors of the church are open. Whether it be <clears throat> Candidate for baptism, Christian experience, letter, yeah. restoration. Uh, now is the time to get things right with Christ. Mm -hmm. Now is the time where we say enough is enough of this backslide and enough is enough of this doing things my way. I want a relationship with you. So I can get things right. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you and we bless you once again. We thank you that we are your children, that you haven't forgotten about us, that you haven't left us where you found us. Thank you. Thank you. That you're still there, whispering in our ear, giving us instructions and guidance. Let your spirit rest, abide, and rule over and in us and around us. To help us navigate some things, this thing called life. Maybe it's to help us navigate some family issues. Maybe it's to help navigate what's going on on the other side of these doors. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you haven't left us nor forsaken us. And today we promise to give you all honor, glory, and praise to do the things that are good and pleasing to you, honoring you. Today, Father, we know that we may not get it right all the time, but we're going to do our best every step of the way. This is my pledge to you because I love you. Today we ask these prayers in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand, clap of praise in this place. Amen. If you are out there in, in uh, streaming land and you're watching this, this message and you wish to give tangibly to this ministry, you can give to Grace Community Church at 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorain, Ohio, 44052. If you have some time on, the, on uh, this Thursday, the 27th at 6 o'clock, I want to see you here in the building where we have a town hall meeting concerning the issue one vote, special vote on August 8th. Yeah. want to see you here to support, just to um, kind of educate you on this important vote on August 8th. Again, thank you everybody for, for coming this morning. Thank you everyone who participated in our Vacation Bible School this previous week. Amen. Um, and I believe that is it. That's it. Amen. 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 If we could all stand so we can so we can dismiss. Again, there is no Bible study this week. Uh, we won't start Bible study uh, until the first Wednesday of August. We'll be back in action on the first, uh, the first Wednesday of August. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, sweet, sweet spirit. There's a sweet, sweet, sweet spirit. In this place, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I
joy to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. And let all of God's children say amen. 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 Have a great week, everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.